Now we're going to add a passing chord here. This is a real useful chord. And it's a diminished chord that's used to get back from the C to the G. Now, what happens is from the C, leave your middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Bring your index finger from the second string over to the first, first fret of the fifth string, and your ring finger from the fifth string over to the second fret of the second. And get all those like that is a fairly easy change. And at the same time, we'll put down our little finger on the high string, which makes it a little bit more of a, something you need to practice. The crucial thing is not to move the middle finger, because if that comes up, you're sort of like a ship without an anchor. Now, when we go back to G, if we want it from that shape, you've always got the option from this shape of playing our G that way, which is sort of like this baby G we talked about. Uh, on the other hand, some people just always prefer to go back to this one. So from this, either of those is acceptable. Now, when we get to the part where we go from the D7 back to the G, Let's also add one other little thing in here. We have a C note on the first fret of the second string at the end of the bar. And what we want to do is play that note and pull it off. So you're playing the open second string with the pull off. But at the same time as the pull off, your ring finger of your left hand is going to go over to the third fret of the bass string and you'll pick that with your right thumb. Now the real coordination here is actually between two hands. So if we can actually get the camera up and watch what happens now. With that finger and with that thumb, they go together. Try that again. And that's an interesting technique because if you've never done it, it feels very strange. But it's really no harder for beginners to learn than it is for advanced people who haven't done it. But it gives a nice flow. Now, right away, we got one more thing to look at. And this is not hard. When we're playing in G, one of the only really smart things I think I've ever figured out about uh, fingerings on the guitar is that since we always want these two fingers to be committed to those bass strings there, then the other notes that we're going to play, you can play all your melody notes with these two fingers. And what that means specifically is, especially the second fret of the fourth or third string, you can reach behind there with your index finger. And he's glad to do something while these guys are holding down the bass notes. All right. And by the same token, when we're going into the second part, see how I'm reaching behind there with my index finger on the left hand? get that note on the second fret of the high string. Okay, then we come on C. Or we can add that passing chord. In this case, it's that chord there, but our little finger is now down. Instead of the third fret, it's on the second fret of the high string. It's actually a little easier. Then E7. It's kind of an odd chord, but it's easy to play. It'd be a form of an A minor. And that's just a little walk up in G. Now look at that little wiggle there. That's, a, that's the technical term for what I'm doing. It's called a wiggle. That's what um, Segovia called it, I believe. I could be wrong about that. So what happens there, in this case, you're just going to hit the open second string. You're on a D7, so your middle finger will already be down on the second fret of the third string, and your thumb's there on the second fret of the bass string. So you'll hit the open second string now, along with the sixth string, and then you do a hammer-on pull-off quickly with your index finger. Well, 
I think by now we're ready to go ahead and split the screen and take a very slow look at Red Wing. And what I'll try to do is play it very straight the first time and then put some of that kind of in-between-the-beat phrasing in that I was talking about. We'll go ahead and take a look at Red Wing. 